find an amazing science internship this summer? Or how about a paid opportunity that helps you gain real skills in the scientific world? Or how about just a cool new class that helps you learn something new because you're hungry for learning and you want to try something different? Even though it may be cold outside, depending on what time you're watching this video, it is not too early to start thinking about what you want to do this summer, especially if it pertains to science. So in this video, I'm going to talk about ways to find amazing science internships and other summer opportunities for high school and college students and provide you with a few tips while you're doing your search. Even though you may not be thinking about what you want to do with yourself this summer yet, maybe you just want to do something fun and related to science. If you're thinking about STEM as a career and you want to get some learning experiences, gain skills, or maybe you just want to discover something new. You might find a new passion based on an activity you do outside of school. No matter what, a summer internship, job, volunteer opportunity, or class can set you up for success in the future. And no matter what you learn, it is a great thing to add to a transcript or a resume. Before you start looking, sit down and think about these questions either by yourself or with your parents. How much time do you have this summer? What are your start dates and your end dates? Is there anything that's already been scheduled or any dates you are absolutely not free? This will help you narrow down your search based on when certain internships or programs may start or end. Write these down and have them with you while you're doing your search. The second question you need to ask yourself is, is how much money do I need to save or earn this summer? Or how much money am I willing to spend on a summer opportunity? Not all internships and summer opportunities come with a paycheck, and some of you may need to spend your summer time doing something that actually produces income. So if you do need money, think about how much. If you don't need to earn any personal income this summer, think about how much you're willing to pay for certain summer experiences. Set a budget for yourself and make sure you stick to that while you're doing your search. Another cost related thing to think about is how far you're able or willing to travel for a summer opportunity. Maybe you only have the ability to travel locally or do something in your area because you don't have a car of your own or you can't go that far. Maybe you are able to go internationally for an experience and there's opportunities abroad as well. So keep this in mind as you're doing your search and make sure you talk to your parents or your guardians about this. Some opportunities in the summer will be paid. Others won't have any cost at all, but it will cost you your time and not pay you anything. Others will have some fees, whether that's for the application or enrollment, especially if it's a program or a class. Others will cost anywhere from $100 to $500 if it's a smaller class or week-long opportunity. And larger camps, especially overnight ones or longer summer opportunities may cost more than $500, up to thousands of dollars even, depending on what you're doing. Now, programs that cost money shouldn't necessarily scare you away if you don't have that money available. A lot of summer programs do have scholarships and aid available, but the earlier you apply to them, the more likely you are to get that funding. So the earlier you start looking for your summer opportunities, the better you are to actually get the ones that'll fit your needs. If you're on the fence of whether or not you want to do a science-related summer opportunity, I encourage you to try. Earlier you start with any sort of job or volunteer opportunity, the more skills you're going to gain and the better you'll be set up for future opportunities down the road. If you have volunteering or internship or job experience, you can take transferable skills that you learn during those times, especially if it's in a science field, and then apply those to when you're applying for college or applying for internships or research opportunities in college or internships or real jobs after college down the road. If you're in high school and you've never made a resume before, you may want to put one together or just a brag sheet before you start looking for your summer opportunities because there may be situations where you'll need to share this information as you're applying to internships or jobs. Many summer opportunities, whether they're classes or camps, or governor's school programs or internships do require applications and many of them ask for a teacher recommendation or for a teacher to fill out a form. I have a whole other video about asking teachers to write you letters of recommendations via email, so be sure to check that out. But let's continue with how do we find these summer opportunities, especially something that meets your interests and needs for this summer. Where do you start first? Stay away from larger job websites like Indeed or LinkedIn or any other larger job search. These are databases and even though you can narrow and filter your results, you have hundreds of thousands of other people looking on the same database and it may not have all of the opportunities that are available to you in your area. So start small. Check at the school level first. At your high school or college, there may already be a resource with a list of summer opportunities available to you 
as a student or ones that the school recommends. Some schools just have a document that they'll share with students. So look on your school website or check with your school counselors to see if something like this already exists. It'll save you a lot of work. Then check local listings. Sometimes local government pages will have opportunities or databases of opportunities for students and keep an eye out at local community centers or areas where you normally go. Sometimes jobs or internships or camps or classes will be posted on physical job boards, like a cork board, or you'll be able to see signs along the road for camps and cool opportunities. Keep an eye out for emails or posters. Obviously vet anything to make sure it's legit before you actually apply, but just being aware of companies and places that are out there that are offering opportunities is a good place to start. Next, ask other students, especially those maybe a year or two ahead of you, what they've done over the summer, especially if they've had science opportunities available to them. See what programs they've applied to, what they've done, what they liked, what they didn't. If someone's done it in the past, that program might still exist for you. So you can go down that route and see if there's anything interesting that an upperclassman did that you might want to try this summer. Then go to your teachers or your counselors to see if they have any programs in mind that might be related, especially to their subject area that would be good for you. I get informed of a lot of biology opportunities as a biology teacher, and so your teachers may be able to provide you with some links to interesting internships or jobs or camps just because they hear about them. Let's dig into specifics for getting into different types of programs. I'm gonna start with internships and jobs, then I'm gonna talk about courses and classes, then volunteer programs, then camps, and then my category of other, which includes travel and virtual programs. So let's start with internships and jobs. Remember, internships can be paid, unpaid, full-time, part-time, it really depends on the company or the organization that's offering the internship. A paid internship is really great because it's meant as a teaching experience to give you skills in the particular field that you're working in. A job may or may not pertain to the actual skills that you'll need to continue on in that field, but sometimes just getting a clerical job at a scientific organization could open your eyes to how that organization works and what goes on there. So don't shy away from office jobs at places that involve science. If you're really set on an internship, look at local universities that might have an Office of Undergraduate Research. From there, you might be able to find research programs and opportunities that are available to undergraduate or high school students. For many internships that are lab-based, there's probably an age requirement in that you have to be 16 or older to work in the lab, but other places like doctor's offices or hospitals or other scientific organizations may allow you to work at the office level or in a gift shop or some other capacity before you reach age 16. If you don't see any particular website with internship postings in your area, you can reach out directly to mentors and scientists that you might be able to find that are doing interesting research that you might want to learn more about. I have a video on finding local labs and how to find information about what researchers are doing in your area, so make sure you check that out, especially if you're interested in just cold emailing researchers or professors that might want to take you on as, as an intern. Next, use personal connections. Maybe you have a neighbor or somebody at your church or a friend of a friend who works in a field that you're interested in. Talk to them and see if they have any opportunities for high school or undergraduate students to work in the summer. When I was in high school, my doctor's office always hired a young adult, someone who is an upperclassman in high school or an early college student to help the nurses bring back patients, clean rooms, and just be a general nurse assistant. I did this for several years and it was a paid opportunity and it gave me great exposure to what happens day to day in a doctor's office. If you can't find a paid opportunity in an area that you're really passionate about, you can still reach out and see if that organization or person would be open to letting you shadow them. Just a few days experience of following somebody around and seeing what they do could be really eye-opening and let you know whether or not that's something that you want to pursue as, as an actual profession for yourself. Try to stay away from internships that make you pay to do the intern work. If you're willing to pay, you'd be better off doing a camp or a course that's aligned with a well-known organization. Speaking of courses and classes, let's get into our next category. There's a lot of opportunities to learn over the summer even though you aren't in school, and a lot of times this can be stuff that is aligned to your personal interests and not just courses you have to take because it's part of the track you have to be on in, in high school or for your major in college. Now be aware sometimes these can cost a lot of money so if they're not funded by the state or some other organization you may have to pay a little bit or a lot to take these courses especially courses that high school students want to take at larger local universities these can come with a hefty price tag. You might be better off going to a local community college and seeing if you can enroll in a college level class over the summer if you're interested. 
If you don't want something that rigorous or intense, see if there's enrichment courses in your area. Sometimes states sponsor governor's school programs where you can earn course credit or you can go to a, a several week long program learning about a topic you really love and enjoy. After you've looked at local universities, online programs, or what your state offers as far as courses over the summer, you can check out online courses. There's so much available and you could set up a schedule for yourself to learn at your own pace over the summer for a topic related to something that you're really interested in. The summer is a great time to learn a new skill that might be related to your job, especially something like coding, and there's plenty of free online courses out there that could help go in this direction. Next up, if you have the time and the ability to volunteer, there's plenty of scientific organizations that might have opportunities for high school or undergraduate students to volunteer over the summer. Think about places like animal protection societies, local wildlife or ecological organizations, hospitals of course have lots of volunteering programs, museums. Go on the website of these places in your area and see what types of opportunities they offer for volunteering. If you're under 18, they may have junior volunteer programs or summer volunteer programs. It just depends on the organization that you're looking at. If you're not sure if a place has a particular official volunteer program, you can always reach out to them directly, send a quick email, make a quick phone call and say, hey, do you have need of any volunteers? A lot of times places will say yes, especially if you're willing to work for free. There's lots of camps related to learning scientific skills and getting scientific experiences across the United States and the globe. Again, some of these can get a little pricey, so make sure you sit down and think about your budget before you apply to any of these. Some camps, whether day or overnight, will require applications, so you want to get started in looking for these a little bit early. If you're not sure what's available to you, but you do have the flexibility to travel, you could do a quick Google search for a camp related to a topic that you're interested in and see what comes up. The same goes for our other category, which involves travel programs, virtual programs, or even summer committees for high school students. So don't be afraid to think a little bit differently about what you want to do with your time this summer, especially if you're not sure quite yet what you want to do. Remember, whatever summer opportunity you choose, it does not lock in your future or your major or whatever job or career you're going to have. A summer opportunity will provide you with the experience to know whether or not you want to keep going in that particular field, maybe with an opportunity to discover a new passion, or an edge up on other students later down the road when you can apply these skills in your classes or in the real world later on. Remember, there's a lot out there, so don't get overwhelmed and don't get discouraged as you're starting to look. Be sure to ask for help from your teachers or your counselors. And if you've done a summer opportunity before, be sure to share it with other students who might be looking for similar things in following years. I hope you get the summer opportunity or internship of your dreams. Give this video a like if it's been helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later.